Hi everyone, I'm Tatiana Smanova, an individual with a background in data analysis and a strong enthusiasm for translating data into the actionable insights. Originally from the Eastern Europe, I earned two bachelor's degrees, one in information systems and another in finance. In the previous role, I navigated uh, data challenges using SQL and Excel, contributing to informed decision making. After moving to the United States, I transitioned to the role of financial management technician in the military. Ensuring correct pay processing for over 2,000 service members monthly and playing a critical role in the post deployment reintegration. Recognizing the potential of combining my various skill set, I've chosen to pursue a career as a data analyst, trying to use analysis, technical skills, and a military discipline to make data driven decisions impactful. To deepen my understanding, I enroll in the Savvy Coders Data Analytics and Python Bootcamp, involving myself in Python, SQL, and Tableau with a focus on financial data. A, that's a perfect match for my background. Choosing Savvy Coders set me up for success in, the, in this ever-changing field, as it's offered a learning environment designed for the practical needs of data professionals. For my capstone project, I'm delving into the transformation in the United States debt and spating patterns over the past decade, placing a specific emphasis on credit card debt. Through a comprehensive analysis uh, that includes state finances and overall spending habits, my objective is to discover valuable insights into the shift in financial behaviors. This analysis holds importance in the understanding how individuals navigate their finances, guiding personalized financial planning. Furthermore, it provides essential information for businesses, financial institutions, investors, general public. I want to share that finding one perfect data set for all my questions was a bit tough. So I decided to work with the three different data sets to get a complete understanding. And each data set uh, helps me to look at specific uh, things like a total debt uh, over the time, trends in debt, credit card payments, state-wise income, and detailed spending categories. The first website I used was the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, where I obtained the credit card balance data set. This data set is delivered from the credit card and mortgage and data provided by the largest financial institutions in the United States. The second website was a Bureau of Economic Analysis, which offers an interactive data application providing a common look and feel for users accessing national, international, regional, or industry statistics. From this site, I got two data sets, one containing annual summary statistic on personal income and consumer spending, and the other featuring the per capita personal consumption expenditures by the major type of product. What I uh, appreciate most above, about both of these resources is that they provide real statistical information covering multiple years. Using Python, I began um, by cleaning the first uh, data set, which contains credit card debt information. Initially, I imported necessary Python libraries, such as Pandas and NumPy for data manipulation and numerical calculations, and Matplotlib for data visualization. The initial analysis focused on gaining genuine insights into the data, including the numbers of rows and columns, values, data types, and identifying any missing values. During this process, I identified and removed unneeded rows containing common information and unnecessary columns using the drop method. And you can see uh, how I did it, like part of that, how I did uh, with the drop method in, in my code. I also cleaned the data by removing symbols like dollar sign and percentage signs, and I also had some commas that I have to remove and change the data type from object and float. So that's part of code over here. 
To categorize credit balance debt, I created a new column named installment balance by subtracting revolving balance from the total balance. To clarify, I just want to explain what revolving credit means. So revolving credits allows borrowing up to a certain limit with a flexible repayment, like a credit card, while installment credit involves fixed payment over time as seen in a loans like a car loans or mortgages. Reviewing the total balance of the time slide, it's evident that debt initially decreased from 700 billion to 550 billion during the pandemic, but uh, from 2021 to 2022, um, there was an upturn reach 640 billion and exceeding 750 billion by 2023. To further explore spending patterns and evaluate whether this increase is linked to the specific credit type, I will analyze the revolving and installment balance over time. Examining that information, I noted a gradual increase in installment balances from 2012 to 2023 percent smoothly over the years. In contrast, revolving balance shows a downward trend during the pandemic, but have been consistently increased since 2022. This pattern closely aligns with what we observed in the previous slide. To gain a deep understanding of credit card payment dynamics, the next step is to explore the average share of account payment distribution over the years. This analysis aims to reveal patterns in how people manage their credit card payments. Looking at that information, I notice a regular pattern. People who pay the minimum on their credit card haven't changed much over the years. But there's something interesting happening with those who pay more than a minimum. So that's yellow bar talking about that. It looks like some folks who used to pay more than switch to paying the full amount since 2019. And this change keeps going up to 2023. I want to understand how money flows in different states and if there's uh, there is a connection between how much people make and how much people spend. Before beginning with the next step of my analysis, I just want to revisit the SQL portion of my project and how I manage the second data set. Using DB a browser for SQLite, I imported two CVS files and worked through them care carefully. Upon um, reviewing the files, I realized uh, they needed to transfer per capita personal income and the per capita disposable personal income information to another file named per capita personal consumption expenditures by major type of products. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be my main file. To accomplish this, I performed updates on the line code values for the relevant rows in the state annual summary statistics personal income and consumer spending file. So I'm showing how I did it over here. Following this, I proceed to insert this information into the second file using insert into um, SQL statement. Additionally, I made some adjustments, such as rename certain columns name. So on my code, you can see here that I rename your name to state and description to spending categories. And I also removed records in the state columns that not related to United States state. So over here is what I, will, uh, I removed. Continuing with my analysis, I used Tableau to create horizontal bars, charts, and um, maps, allowing for a comparison between the per capita income and personal spending by state. This visual representation provides insights in the specific state and, um, 
and spending categories such as disposable income and consumption expenditures. During the uh, exploration, it became evident that in 2022, the District of Columbia uh, spent uh, significantly more than they earn. Uh, this prompted me to delve deeper and identify which states fall uh, into the categories of our spending where expenses exceed income. Uh, the next chart shows that there are seven states um, experiencing this situation, and you can see the name of them on the slide. But uh, building on my analysis, it's interesting that the majority of states demonstrated a positive balance, earning more than they spent. This observation leads me to the next phase of exploration, where I will delve into the specific of people's spending habits. As I explored major spending categories such as goods and services, a continuous upward trend became visible. Both categories show sustained growth over the years. To gain more insights, we will delve into the spending patterns within the subcategories. Examining the goods categories, it's apparent that the pandemic had an impact on all uh, subcategories, causing a temporary decrease. So you can see it's all on all uh, lines that was decreased to the pandemic. However, certain subcategories such as uh, food and beverage purchase for off premises consumptions, other non dutiable goods and recreation goods and vehicles, not only whether the impact but displayed a consistent upward trend over the years with a notable rise in the last three years. And we can see it by the percentage. For instance, food and beverage purchase for off-premises consumptions demonstrate an increased percentage in average spending per person, 10% uh, in 2020, 7.45% uh, in 2021, and 7.81% in 2022. The indicates, this indicates a um, significant rise in the spending on the takeout, delivery, and home dining experience. So uh, more and more people seem to prefer the easy and flexibility of having meals at home or somewhere other than restaurants. This change in how people choose to eat fit with the today's lifestyle, whether saving uh, times and using technology for food delivery are top priorities. Likewise, the category of uh, other non durable goods saw a consistent rise going up by 8.64 percentage in 2020, 7.43 percentage in 2021, and 7.31 percentage in 2022. This indicates an ongoing increase in spending on different non-durable uh, non items such as everyday goods and products. Recreational goods and vehicles saw a remarkable increase too, reaching almost 18% in 2020, 19.48% in 2021, and 7.6% in 2022. This indicates a notable rise in spending on recreational items and vehicles during these years. On the other hand, uh, the gasoline and other energy goods showed a variant pattern experiencing a notable decrease followed by the increasing over the years, closely like to changing in prices. To the investigation uh, from the, so I just searched some information in the Google, confirmed that from um, January to June 2022, the price of regular motor gasoline rose by 49% while diesel fuel saw a slightly higher increases at 55 percentage. This highlights um, how changes in price impacts spending behaviors within the categories. Looking at, at the spending in the food services and accommodation category, 
there's something interesting to note. Um, after a drop caused by the pandemic, and we can see it over here, spending went back to normal in 2021 and then shot up by 70 percentage in 2022. This increase could mean that the economy is bouncing back as people with more money to spend and the strong belief in the economy are treating themselves to dining out, travel, and accommodation. In the, in the category of housing and utilities, there has been a change from the usual early increase of around 3%. In the last two years, it went up to 5.6% in 2021 and 7.45% in 2022. Remarkable, US home prices have been going up for the 11 years straight with a big jump of 18% in 2021 and it's still going bad in 2022 by 4.77%. This tells us that various factors like market trends and um, how people spend are playing a role in this trend. To, uh, to look the, uh, to the recreation services category, uh, we can observe a large rise of 14% from 2021 to, to 2022 reflecting a positive rebound from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. This increase signals a potential recovery in the, um, in the recreation and entertainment industry, with individuals showing a greater readiness to, particular, uh, to participate in the events and recreational programs as a pandemic-related concerns relief. Similarly, the transportation services category absorbed a significant increase of almost 22% in 2022. Uh, this rise could be affected by changes in the full price that I told before in the previous slide. Other interesting findings showed that the spending on um, financial services and insurance healthcare and other services uh, has bounced back to the normal levels after the dip uh, during the pandemic. Uh, these sectors are recovering and getting back to the spending patterns seen before the pandemic as economic conditions stabilize. Uh, on the conclusion slide, um, I have some outcomes from my analysis and um, that I covered before. Um, so uh, that in conclusion, my presentation, but at the end, I just want to say, um, thank all the staff, instructors, TEs, as well as my group as CV coders for their support and assistance. Uh, throughout our time together in the cohorts, we use the agile methodology and it's collaborative an adaptive approach demonstrated to be extremely helpful. This methodology fostered efficient teamwork, help us to well, work well together so we could solve problems, improve ideas and create good results. Our commitment to agile principles made learning fun and productive. Thanks again to everyone.